This video will cover some basic formatting tools along with a few essential tips that will help you navigate your Google Sheets. You can open Google Sheets by going to sheets.google.com or you can open a blank sheet right from your Omnibox by going to sheets.new. Right now though, I'm actually going to open this mock field trip planning sheet, which you can find in the video description if you want to click along with me. So here we are in Google Sheets. These are your columns right here, and then these are your rows right here. Then we also have our formatting toolbar, these little icons right up here, and then up here is our file menu. So this is a very plain sheet that I made where I just have a list of students and some information for an upcoming field trip, like bus number, t-shirt size, etc. You can use Google Forms to collect some of this information. So in this particular scenario, I'd probably create a Google Form where students would fill out their lunch choices and t-shirt size, and then I would add in the columns right here in order to start collecting permission slips and grouping students and all of that. So if you're not familiar with using Google Forms and Sheets together, I will cover that in a later video. But right now, let's just start with some basic formatting. To select the entire spreadsheet range, you can click on this little square in the top left corner of the sheet. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, Control A, to highlight the entire sheet as well. So now with everything highlighted, I can change things like the font, the text size, and the alignment. And it will apply these changes to the entire sheet. You'll notice that a lot of these basic tools are similar, if not identical, to those in Docs and Slides, so that makes getting started a little bit easier. Another useful trick is the ability to select multiple rows or columns all at once. This allows you to do things like apply formatting or resize the selected cells as a specific group. So to do this, you'll just click on the first column you want grouped, then hold down your shift key, and then click on the last column that you want grouped. You'll see that it has now selected all of the cells within this range, and I can make changes to them all as one group. You can also select a group of cells that aren't next to each other by clicking on the column and then using the control key. So let's say I just want to select this one, this one, and this one. I can do that as well. And on a Mac, instead of the control key, it would be the command key. So now I can actually resize these cells all at once. So I'm going to click here, hold down my shift key, and then highlight all of these right here. And I can just hover my cursor over the line right here, it turns blue, and then I can move them around all at once. So you can see now that it has resized them all at the same size rather than having to go through and highlight each one and resize each one individually. Another essential formatting tool is text wrapping. You can see in some of my cells that the text is actually cut off. It doesn't quite fit with the cell dimensions that I've set, so I'm going to use text wrapping to fix this. So to highlight my entire spreadsheet, once again, I'm going to click on this little square right up here and then I'm going to come over to my formatting toolbar and then select text wrapping and then this little icon in the center that says wrap. I can also do this from the menu bar, format, text wrapping, wrap. So you can see now that what it has done is made it so that I can view all of the text in my cell no matter how much text I add it will not overflow or get cut off and everything's just a little bit neater. So this is actually one of the first things that I usually do when starting a new spreadsheet. So the text wrapping is a really valuable tool. So now that I have that taken care of, I can start working on some more of the formatting and I'm going to pay attention to the header row right here. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, click on this last column here to highlight all of the cells. And then I'm going to just do some of, of the other basic formatting. So I'm going to make it bold, I'll change the background color and then I'll make it a little bit bigger. So now I have my headers that are more easily distinguishable from everything else, but you will see that when I scroll down, the headers actually disappear. And while I probably know that this is the chaperone category and this is the bus number category, it would be nice if these could stay at the top. So what I'm going to do is actually freeze them so that they do. So I'm just going to click on this first row right here and then come up to view, freeze, 
and then one row. If I wanted to freeze more than one row, I would just highlight that and select up to current row. So now you can see that when I scroll down, my header stays frozen at the top. Now what I'm also going to do is that little trick from earlier. So I want to just make these columns a little bit smaller than the other ones because they don't really need to be equal size. So I'm going to click on this one, hold my control key, and then select this one. And then on a Mac, that would be the command key instead of control. So I'm going to just drag this a little bit so that it is a little bit smaller. And then again, you can see how these are resizing together. So just a quick little time saving tool. And then I'm just going to make this column a little bit longer as well. One formatting trick that you might not be super familiar with is actually the ability to split a column. So you can see that I have my student names here and right now they're actually alphabetized by the student's first name. But if I wanted to alphabetize by the student's last name right now, I can't really do that. But what I can do is split the text into two columns and that's going to make me able to sort by last name. So what I want to do first is actually right mouse click to insert a new column to the right. So now I've got my blank column and this is going to be the destination column for my students last names. So then I'm going to click back on this column right here and then come up to data and then split text to column. And now here's the separator pop up right down here and I could say detect automatically, but it doesn't always detect what I want it to do. So I'm going to have it set to separate on the space. So you can see that in my student names, what separates first and last is just a little space right here. So I'm going to select that. And you can see now I have two columns for my students and I can resize them just a little bit by doing this. And then I can change, what is it, first name and last name here. And then if I wanted to sort by last name, I'm going to click on this column and then I'll do the same thing, sort sheet A through Z. And now I can sort my students alphabetically by last name. Now we'll talk about how to do some of the more advanced sorting in one of the other videos. So you can do things like sort by bus number and then by group leader and then by last name. We'll talk about that in another video, but for now we are ready to move on. So one of the things that for some reason really bothers me about the cells is that I think by default it shows up kind of at the top of the cell. So when you see the text, it shows up at the top here, but I always like for the text to appear in the middle of the cell. So what I'm going to do is click up here to highlight everything and then I'm going to come over here to the vertical align icon and then I'm going to select the one for the middle. And you can see a very subtle change but you can see that now all of the text by default is in the center of the cells instead of at the top and I honestly just think that looks a little bit neater and so that's something I definitely recommend. So another thing that you can do with the text is rotate it. So for example if I click on first name and then come over here to the text rotation options. It gives me a few different ways to have the text. So I can obviously have it, you know, horizontal, like nothing fancy, or I could tilt it upwards. Now, I think for this particular purpose, I wouldn't really need to do something like that, but I'll show you kind of what it looks like if you do. And you can have it kind of rotate up or down this way as well. And I like to do this actually with calendars and things like that. So for example, you can see that in these monthly calendar templates that I made, I did that with my to-do list. So right here, you can see that I used the rotate up option. So that's how I did these to-do lists right over here. Now let's talk about the alternating colors tool. This is a great formatting tool that allows you to apply a specific type of formatting where every other row would be automatically highlighted. So let's come up here to format and then alternating colors. And now you can see that because I had my entire spreadsheet selected, it's going to automatically highlight everything, including all of these unused columns and this unused space down here. So to narrow this down a little bit, I'm going to click on apply to range and then I'm going to select a new range. So I'm just going to be very specific to select only the columns that I want to include, and then I'll click OK. Okay, 
right, so now you can see that it has only highlighted the actual data instead of all of this other extra stuff right over here. So that makes it a little bit neater for us. And then I can play around with some of these styles. You can see that there are some default styles already selected here. You can include the header in your style or not. So if you have a header row that you'd like to differentiate, you can include that as well. So what I love about this is that it's automatic. So instead of having to do each row one by one, you can see that it automatically highlights everything and it makes it much easier to visually differentiate between the rows and I don't really have to do a whole lot of work in order to get there. I used something like this on my student growth tracker. So here is kind of an example of what I've done and I did this again automatically using the alternating colors. The great thing about using the alternating colors is that if I add in additional rows, it will maintain the formatting without messing anything up. So for example, if I want to insert multiple rows, I'm going to click on this row right here, hold down my shift key, and then I'm just going to click a little bit down here, and then right mouse click, and now I'm going to insert eight rows above. So you can see that if I just click on one row, it's going to say insert one row, but I've clicked on eight rows, so now it's going to let me insert eight rows. So when I do that, again, you can see that it maintained the same formatting pattern without messing anything up, and I am good to continue adding students without having to worry about the formatting. So these colors right here were actually done with something called conditional formatting. And basically, because I've added these rows, that's the only thing that doesn't apply, but I can just click here and then actually drag it down so that it does apply to those new cells. And basically what conditional formatting does is it allows me to automatically highlight certain cells depending on the conditions that I've set for it. And I will talk a little bit more about how to do that in the next video. So another thing I actually do want to show you on this sheet right here is the ability to merge cells. So basically what that means is you can see that some of my cells here are actually spanning across multiple columns. You can see that this one right here is one cell that's spanning across two columns, but you can see down here that the two columns are actually still there. So basically what this is is the merge tool. So I'm actually just going to unmerge real quick so you can see what I mean. So obviously that's weird and I want to change that. So what I'm going to do is click on these three cells and these are the cells that I want to merge together. So I'm going to click on this little merge cells icon right here and it's going to merge these cells together so that they are in one group. So this is a really great formatting tool for Google Sheets. I like to use this a lot for things like titles or headers and things like that. So another very useful tool to help you format all kinds of Google Sheets. So now that I'm back on my field trip sheet, I'm just going to change the text color here to white because with the color that I have now, I think the white looks a little bit better. And now I'm going to add a border. So you can see that if I just highlight my header row here, and I'm going to come up here to borders. You can see that there are a lot of different options for where I want to actually put the border, and there are a lot of options for different border colors and then border styles. So just as a personal preference, I like to usually add a thicker border around my header row, so I'm going to select this one right here, and then I'm going to just add it around the entire perimeter. So you can see now that I have this thicker border here. And again, as a personal preference, I also like to add the dotted lines inside the actual spreadsheet. So I'm going to just come down here and select all of my data, and then I will come back up to borders and then border style. And then I'm going to select this dotted line right here. Now, then once I select the style, I'm going to basically tell it where I want to put the border. So I'm going to select, let's say this one right here, and you can see that now the dotted lines have lined my columns and my rows. And then just to change the color to give it a little bit of a softer line, I will come back up here and you can see a little bit of a difference there. 
So in doing that, you can see that what I accidentally did was erase the formatting on the border that I did here. So I'm just going to come back up and change that back to how I want it. So those are borders. And again, you can kind of play around with it to get the look and feel that you're going for and kind of mix and match depending on your needs. And you can see that in my student growth tracker, I used borders quite a bit. I have the thicker borders up here and then the dotted line borders over here. And I also have, you know, different types of borders in this calendar template that I made as well. So you can see that in this case, I actually added a margin over the top and the bottom. And I just did that by inserting rows and it makes the borders that I've added here a little bit more pronounced as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways to format and customize your Google Sheets. And to recap, we went from this sheet right here, which was basically your default everything. It's what we would see if we opened a spreadsheet from Google Form submissions or if we started from scratch and we turned it into this right here. So I would say a huge improvement. And in the next video, I will cover some additional formatting tips like how to do these little checkboxes right over here, how to create some drop down menus, as well as the conditional formatting that I talked about a little bit earlier, and some additional tips that will help you sort and organize the data a little bit to help you really make the most of your Google Sheets. So I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment below. And I hope that you will join me for the next video in the Teacher's Guide to Google Sheets series.